Tech companies have not been doing too well recently. On the day before I'm filming this video, companies such as Microsoft, Google and Facebook all posted extremely disappointing earnings, which led to their stock prices absolutely plummeting from 7.7% for Microsoft to 9% for Google and up to 30% for Facebook's parent company Meta, which led their CEO Zuck to even admit that the company would be facing near-term challenges in revenue. So if you're someone who's learning to code and wants to become a software engineer, you might justifiably be asking, what does this all mean for our careers? I mean, all I wanna do is write code and make a bunch of money doing it. Well, unfortunately, this does matter for us. For example, according to data tracker layoffs.fyi, over 92,000 people have lost their jobs. This is because as the economy does worse, so do companies, and hence they have less money to pay fat stacks to their software engineers. And in case you're new here, my name is Thomas. I am an ex-economics graduate, ex-finance, ex-consulting, left those industries, did a complete career switch and became the internet make coder and became a software engineer instead. And I now work as a junior software engineer here in London. On this channel, my goal is to help all of you internet make coders to do the same. So if you would like to join me in this movement, I welcome you to subscribe and hit the bell notification button down below and while you're down there you might as well also hit the like button a rumor has it that the people who hit the like button on this video will be a lot less affected by the recession so you might as well do that okay all right all right all right and with that the plan for this video is as follows first we'll discuss what a recession actually is and why it is particularly threatening for the tech industry. Number two, once we understand this critical context, we can then analyze what this all means for you and whether you actually need to worry. And lastly, we also need to discuss obviously what you should be doing right now to best prepare for the hard times that could be coming for us. Okay, so next, I'm just gonna explain a bit about like what a recession is, how it works and all of that. I know this sort of off topic on this channel given I'm a coding channel. So if you don't care about having an economics lesson, you're very welcome to go to this timestamp right here. If you just wanna find out the specifics of what this means for you and your career and what you should do and stuff like that. Okay, so believe it or not, but the economy is actually a lot more about like human psychology and what people believe rather than money and stuff and governments or whatever people usually think that economics is about. Whether the economy is doing well or whether it's doing badly is all just about what people believe and how much confidence do people have in the future. Let me just give you an example. Let's say right now things are going really well, AKA people have a lot of confidence that in the future, things will also keep going well, as in they're going to keep their jobs, their businesses are going to keep doing really well. And what this means is that people are very willing to spend money to buy things, to use services, all these kinds of things, because they believe that in the future, they're also going to keep making a lot of money, which means that they don't need to worry right now or save because in the future they'll just keep making more money, right? So what that leads to is that businesses make a lot of money because people are spending a lot of money. And when businesses are making a lot of money, businesses then have a lot of money to invest into new projects, to make new products, new services, and to pay more salaries to their employees, which again then leads to more people having more money and then when more people have more money, they spend more money, business do well, and it's like this one big cycle. What also happens during these really good times when people, people who have a lot of money, so essentially institutional investors and people who are looking for companies to invest their money into are willing to take a lot of risks. So you have a lot of small startups which just happen to be tech companies a lot of time. During good times, these investors, these people with a lot of money, with a lot of confidence in the future, invest into a lot of tech startups. People believe that in the future, these companies will start making money because they're tech companies and it's all cool and all of that. So much money is going into tech companies that aren't actually good companies to begin with. So in general, the tech industry is so lucrative because there is so much investor money going to the, and these companies in general have so much money to invest to begin with. But then unfortunately for that same reason, when there is a recession, Comparatively speaking, it seems like tech companies do worse, but really it's just sort of bringing them back to a more 
reasonable level. So I do think that entry-level developers will unfortunately be disproportionately impacted by a tech recession compared to more experienced ones as they are simply the easiest for companies to replace. And this is why it is especially important that you keep developing your skills to be as competitive as you can possibly be in these trying times. And you can do that very easily with the help of today's sponsor, Udacity. Udacity is a leading online learning provider that empowers individuals with the technical skills they need to advance their careers. Udacity offers over 60 different nano degree programs in many different fields such as data science, business, programming, artificial intelligence, and cyber security. The levels range from beginner all the way to advanced, built in partnership with leading tech companies such as Google, AWS, and Microsoft, which means that you can learn the exact skills that these companies are hiring for. All Udacity's nano degree programs emphasize project-based active learning, which is what I always talk about as the best way to learn. The programs are also entirely self-based and you can have access to Udacity's mentors at all times. So whatever path interests you, be becoming a data scientist or a Java developer. And if you're looking for a curated path to really advance your career, Udacity's nano degrees honestly seem like a really great option. So I'll leave a link down to a couple of them that could be particularly interesting for you. Thank you for Udacity for sponsoring this video. And now back to the video. Okay, so our recession seems inevitable, which means that it seems inevitable that they are unfortunately going to be slightly less jobs available. But if we again just take a step back, tech isn't going anywhere. Like, like if you just look at this in the big picture, like the reason why coding is such an amazing skill, reason why software engineering is such a great career path, because in this day and age, the greatest value in this economy is being created through technology. If you are someone who can create this technology, like just think about your life or all the things you look like, Uber, Netflix, YouTube, all of this is technology that people demand, like entire world, like what people do every day is all really about technology and software in some kind of way. That is why software engineers are in such high demand because, because everyone uses technology so much. So if you are someone, if you're the person who can create this technology, your skills are always going to be in demand. What will happen as a result of a recession is that the bad companies, the ones that we talked about, that shouldn't have existed anyway because they couldn't even make a profit, especially the zombie companies, these companies are going to die. These companies are going to go away. So unfortunately, if you had a job in one of these companies, then you're just gonna have to find a new one, unfortunately. But I would even argue that this is a good thing because if you're someone looking for a job right now, you know that in a couple of years, if there is a recession, the only companies that are going to be left are companies that are actually good, that are actually robust, because they had to be robust and they had to be good in order to get through this recession. Instead of building a career in a company that might just end up dying because they don't know what they're doing, essentially. The recession essentially just wipes out the bad companies and the good companies might do slightly worse and like they might take a bit, of, bit more time to get on with their big projects. If you're a software engineer, your skills are always going to be in demand um, because the good times will always come back. And another reason why this situation might even be good for you is if you join a big, because a lot of the big tech companies, the way they compensate people is by giving them stock options. So essentially they give you the company's stock as part of your compensation package. If you get those stock options right now when the stocks are really cheap, in a couple of years time, again, when the stock market eventually recovers, that money that you receive as stocks is going to absolutely skyrocket. If you look at the past couple of recessions, every couple of years after the recession, what has always happened is that while during the recession, the stock market might go down by like 30%, a couple of years after the recession, it comes back up by like 30, 40% on average or something like that. There's a couple of things you need to know. First of all, because the companies that are gonna be worst hit by this recession are gonna be smaller companies, you should probably focus on building the kinds of skills that these big companies want. Because if you're joining a startup, if you're joining a really small company right now, you don't know whether that company is even gonna exist in a couple of years. So specifically, this means C, computer science fundamentals, lead code. I know it can be annoying if you don't enjoy those kinds of things, but the more you can study the fundamentals, learn the fundamentals, and become a really good software engineer who actually understands how computers work, how software works, rather than just someone who did one course on Udemy to like know the basics of Python or something like that. The more you can understand the fundamentals, the better you are going to be and the more confident the companies are going to be in investing their 
even scarcer resources and even scarcer money into you rather than someone else. So it's absolutely critical that you do courses like CS50 or you watch my videos on data structures and algorithms if you want to do that. And in general, it's even more important than before to understand what it takes to actually learn to code, to really master any skill, to really be good at something, you need to like doing it. And this is something that I see comments sometimes when people being like, I don't like coding. I, I really just hate coding. But how can I learn to code? And I'm just like, if you hate coding, number one, why? Just why are you doing it? Why? Why don't you just focus on learning some other skills, some other industry? And I understand the financial thing, like coding pays a lot of money and, and all that. But in the long run, if you're just doing something for money and you don't actually enjoy it, like number one, you're just not gonna enjoy your life. And like, that's what we're all trying to do at the end of the day anyway. But also you're never going to be as good as the people who actually want to do it. Like you can spend the time, you can code for three, you can code for three hours a day or something like that. But if you're not actually passionate about it, if you're not actually interested in actually properly learning coding and like becoming actually really good at it, you're not going to be willing to put in the extra effort to like think about it all the time and obsess over it to the point where you're actually going to understand these fundamental principles and to fundamentally become a really good programmer. Like the reason why I, I would say that I'm pretty decent compared to like most junior level programmers, but like I'm not saying I'm the best in the world, obviously, because I just, haven't done it for that long. I've like, only been doing it for like a year, but compared to most peers in at my experience level, I'd say I'm pretty good. And the simple reason for that is because I really want to learn coding. I really want to understand, like literally I've written this down in my like life goals right now. My One of my life goals is to learn everything there is about computers. And it's just really interesting to me that the, like the challenge aspect of solving these coding problems is just really intellectually stimulating to me. And I can really just I can just get lost in coding for like all day. Like for example, yesterday I was doing this React course for like literally from like 7 a.m. to like 9 p.m. simply because I really wanted to because I'm really excited about it. And that is a fundamental reason why eventually I will be really good at this because I am willing to do the hard work and I'm willing to go the extra mile because this is what I want to learn. I, this is something that I genuinely am passionate about. So if you don't feel like you could ever feel that passion, like you could still become decent, you could still be, get a job, but like understand you're never gonna be the best. You're never gonna be as good as you can be if you can't find a passion for it. But so if you have the similar mindset like I do, like where you actually really want to learn these things, whether we have a recession or not, like you really don't have to worry because you're always going to be someone that companies aren't going to want. That is the number one requirement that companies have on their employees. They want people who are really passionate. They want people who really want to learn. It's literally why everyone at my company says all the time, we want people who really want to learn these things. And you need to be someone who wants to learn these things if you actually want to learn them. But even beyond this, there are things that you simply need to know about how your brain works and what are the most effective ways for you to actually learn things. I've spent so much time like reading books and like uh, looking at like literally like scientific studies and things, how the human brain works because our brains are built in a certain kind of way to recognize patterns. If you just learn the right principles and the right ways to think about learning, learning anything literally becomes so easy. That's why I'm able to learn things so fast. And because this video is too long, I'm gonna direct you to this video right here, which I made last week, which talks about exactly what these principles are and how I specifically apply them to not only learning to code, but learning anything in my life. So absolutely go watch this video right now, right after this one.